What is up creators, I hope you're doing well. Today we're returning to the Air Like series. We're gonna try to replicate the black and white styles from Lomography, Earl Grey and Lady Grey. Now these two film stocks are very similar to each other, only that one has an ISO more for daylight photography, while the other one is designed more for darker scenarios, but they're so similar that I decided to include them in the same tutorial. Now, these two styles are a suggestion by none other than myself in this case, just because there's a lot of black and white styles that we haven't covered, and these two are quite interesting. Now, if you guys have any video that want me to make or style that want me to break down, put it down in the comment section and I'll check it out. So you know how this works. First of all, we're gonna check out some examples shot with these film stocks to just break down the main characteristics. So we have some knowledge when we jump into Lightroom, edit a photo with that information and create a preset out of it. So first of all, let's check out some examples shot with the Earl Grey, and then we're gonna check out the differences with the Lady Grey. Now the Earl Grey creates this very dramatic and intense looking image and this is in part because it has a very contrasty look. We can see how the blacks are very intense, very deep. We're losing some information in the blacks and then the other extreme of our exposure, the whites, we're also losing some detail in the brightest points on our image. So this is creating a very contrasty image where we have intense blacks and intense whites but in the middle ranges is the interesting part because the latitude over here in the mid-tone shadows and highlights it's very nice. We're preserving a lot of information in these parts of the images and being honest, that's the part of the image where we're exposing and where we're focusing when we're shooting a photograph. So middle ranges of our subject are gonna have a lot of information, but the extremes are gonna be very punchy and contrasty. So it's quite an interesting look. Now, apart from that, the Earl Grey has an 100 ISO, so it's for daylight photography. And we can observe that the grain is quite small, it's quite contained, but it is there just given a nice texture to the image. Then talking about the Lady Grey, it's very similar to the Earl Grey, but in this case we have 400 ISO and as a consequence we have a bit more information in the bright points on our image but also in the shadows. We're still preserving those intense blacks that we saw in the Earl Grey, but in this case we're gonna have a bit more detail in the shadows but also in the highlights and in particular the whites don't have that overexposed look that we had in the Earl Grey. Now also as a consequence to having that 400 ISO, we have a bit more of a rougher or bigger grain in our image and it just give me a bit more texture in comparison to the Earl Grey. But in general, it's very similar, just a little variant with a bit more information throughout the entirety of the image. So great, that's enough for the analysis. Now let's jump into Lightroom and recreate these styles. But before that, as always, I'm gonna remind you that these two presets are already included in the Airlight -like preset pack V3, but also the analog preset pack. Now, what's the difference between these two packs? Well, the Airlight V3 contains all the presets that we created throughout the Airlight series in this season, whether it be from analog styles, uh, movies, or creators. But the analog pack contains only the analog styles that we recreated in this season, in previous seasons, and in future seasons. So what it does is just group all the analog styles in a single pack in case you're only interested in that. So these two preset packs are just time savers so you don't have to watch all my tutorials, but in the process you can support me so I continue to do videos for you guys. Also, as on my shop over here, you can find my personal presets and personal LUTs that I use every single day to edit my videos like this one or my photos for Instagram. So if you can support me in that manner by purchasing anything, I'd be very thankful. And if not, don't worry guys, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. Okay, creators, here I am in Lightroom in the editing module, auto develop module. And first of all, let's create the Earl Grey. And then from the Earl Grey, we're gonna edit it a bit and create the Lady Grey. So we don't have to start from scratch. It's just gonna be two variants on the same preset. Now talking about this image, it's not the best image in the world, but I chose it because we have white in the sky. We have blacks over here. We have a great latitude over here where we have some mid-tones, have some highlights and some shadows. So we have all the elements that we need to work with to achieve this preset or these two styles that we're gonna to try to replicate. So before we start moving around the sliders, we need to change this image into black and white. And the way that I like to work in black and white within Lightroom is just changing the color profile. So over here we have profiles. We can select Adobe Monochrome or by selecting this little button that says B and W over here, or with V on your keyboard, it will change your image into black and white. So what's happening right here is that Lightroom is interpreting the data coming from your raw file as if it were black and white. Therefore, some of the tools aren't gonna to be useful. For example, we have some saturation, as you can see, they're nullified. In HSL, we only have the luminance, we don't have hue or saturation. Some other tools that alter color grading, for example, the name color grading is present only, so you can apply maybe a sepia look into your black and white or some indigo or anything like that. And also camera calibration is present because, well, camera calibration also alters the contrast and exposure of your image. Luckily for us, we're not gonna use them today, we're just gonna concentrate in the basic corrections. 
Now, first of all, the earth gray, what we want to do is achieve that high contrast, very deep blacks and very overexposed whites while preserving the mid ranges, mid tones, highlights and shadows. We need some information over there. So let's start off with the basic corrections. Highlights, I don't want to go towards the positives because, well, highlights will control the mid tones. So I'm just going to go a bit towards the negatives just to achieve more information in the bright points on our image. Just going to go around the minus 35. Shadows also controls the lower end of our midtones. As you can see, we don't have the midtone slider in basic corrections, so these two will have to do. We don't want to go towards the negatives, otherwise, we introduce more contrast and less detail. We want to go a bit towards the positives or the plus 25, just achieving a bit more information in these darker areas. And then whites and blacks will control our extremes, the brightest points and the darkest points. So, whites, we're going to push them up towards the positives to achieve more contrast all the way up to the plus 30s. Meanwhile, blacks, I'm just going to drag them down to achieve those rich and contrasty blacks that we saw in the example images on the minus 27. So right here, our image is looking a bit more contrasty than our original. Now, one problem right here with, that I have with our comparison is that our original image is colored. So what I need to do is just change this one into black and white so we have a fair comparison. So what I'm going to do is right click our photo, swap settings before and after. And right here in this one, now we have our color image at the right. I'm just going to change it into Adobe Monochrome as well, black and white. And then right click again and swap our before and afters, making sure that we have our image that we're editing at the right. So now we can compare our original image, change it to black and white with our edit over here. We're not quite finished with the contrast. Let's move down to the tone curve, which is a tool that can alter the exposure and contrast. Now, we're not going to do anything fancy over here. We're just going to move the two points that we have by default. This point controls the blacks pushing it up will introduce more white or brightness into dark points on our image to the right more blacks and this other point will control the whites to the left you introduce more brightness and to the bottom you introduce more darkness so it's very simple what we're going to do first of all is push the blacks not towards the positives otherwise we introduce more gray we want to push it towards the right not too much but enough to introduce more deep blacks the input or the value that i moved it is input 22 you can also type it in over here with your numeric keyboard and the output is zero. The output is the Y coordinate and we didn't move it vertically. So it's at zero. Then the whites over here, I'm just going to push it towards the left to achieve more contrast and more overexposure, maybe around these values, 225 in the input output, 255 because I didn't move it up or down. And right here, you can see the difference immediately. Our image is a lot more punchy and contrasty. A bit too much, but don't worry. We still have to move a couple of sliders that will alter the contrast and exposure. But you can see what the tone curve has done. This is before and after, just adding that punch into the blacks and into the whites. So and this is what we did in the basic corrections is preserve the midtones and the tone curve, we accentuated the contrast in the whites and the blacks. Okay, the other sliders that we need to move to achieve the contrast is the presence tab. Now the presence tab, as you can see, texture clarity and dehaze, well, they're basically effects, but they're included in the basic corrections because they also alter the exposure and contrast. So if we zoom in just a bit, we can see that this image is supremely sharp, not only because it's poorly shot, it's shot at one over 8,000 of a second, but don't judge me, I was in a moving vehicle in a run and gun situation, but because this image is shot with a digital sensor with 33 megapixels, which is very sharp, very contrasty, and with modern day lenses, which are by default, very sharp, very refined and very contrasty. The filters that we're trying to replicate right here are for analog photography, which are shot with old cameras like those, which the lenses weren't as precise. So what I need to do right here is just reduce a bit of that contrast, a bit of that sharpness that modern photography has. So these tools are great for that. Texture towards the positives, ours adds a bit more digital sharpness, way too much. What I want to do is just drag it towards the negatives, just to soften up our details just a bit around the minus 25 and clarity what it does is add more contrast into the mid tones or to the central subject which is way too much what i want to do is just reduce that digital contrast a bit more towards the negatives again at a minus 25 just softening up a bit of our image you can see the difference how we're just making our image a tad less sharp and a tad less contrasty in the details then the haze where it says it does what it says it just reduces the haze notice over here uh, the building in the background and the windshield Towards the positives, it reduces that mist. Towards the negatives, it adds more mist or simulated mist, which I normally compare it to similar to the halation effect of old cameras. So right here, you can see how the bright points on our image start to glow just a bit, as if this image was shot with a diffusion filter. But in this case, it wasn't shot with a diffusion filter. It's just a defect uh, that the haze can create. Notice how 
everything starts to glow just a bit. So I don't want to go all the way to extreme, but maybe around the minus 30 is going to be enough. As you can see, the haze affects dramatically the contrast as well. So that's why we're using it also to compensate that over contrast that we added in the tone curve over here. Okay, this preset is almost finished. One thing that remains is the grain. Now the grain in the Earl Grey wasn't as big, but it was present. So right here, I'm going to go into effects tab. Next to vignette, you can also add a vignette if you want to stylize your edit a bit more. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at zero, leave it up to you guys. But we have grain. So I'm just going to add a bit of quantity or amount, maybe around 30%. I want to zoom in just to see what we're doing. And then the size is a bit too big. I'm just going to reduce it, maybe around the 40s. So we have this very nice grain, but if we zoom out, it's barely noticeable, just giving it a nice texture. So let's save this preset and apply it into a couple of other images and see if we need to modify it or if we did a good job. So I'm just going to save the preset. You're going to go into your left panel and on the presets over here, you're going to select the plus sign, create a preset. You're going to name it. And remember, you don't want to mark any of the things that you didn't use. For example, white balance, exposure and contrast. I normally use these three sliders to compensate maybe if the image was poorly shot on field. So I don't want to mark them. We didn't use any detail. We didn't use vignette. So you're not going to mark them. Now with one our keyboard, you can see our before and after and our image is looking quite contrasty, but not enough. And the problem is that we added too much haze over here. You can see that there's basically little difference between the shadows over here, the blacks with our original photo and our final image. So what I'm going to do is just nail back a bit of the dehaze, maybe around the minus 20. You guys can play around. And there, right here, we have a bit more of a punchy looking image. The dehaze was taking away too much contrast towards the negative. So maybe around the minus 20 is just going to be enough. We still have those whites, which are a bit more exposed than the original image. We have those contrasty blacks, as you can see, for example, over here in the original image, we can see some detail in the trousers, but right here, we don't see anything because our blacks are intense. So I like this value more, minus 20 on the dehaze. And um, to maybe update our preset that we already said, we can go into our preset panel. And as you can see, I've already added it into the LI preset pack V3. I'm just gonna hover around over my preset that I just created, right click, an update with current settings. And there our preset will be saved with the new settings that we just edited. Okay, so here I have this image. Uh, first of all, let me change it just to black and white, uh, just to change it with the comparison image. I'm just gonna right click, copy, after settings with before. And now we have black and white images. Now let's apply the preset into this one. So I'm just gonna go down and see Earl Grey. And we can notice a bit of a change. We have, we have a bit more contrast. Uh, the whites are still overexposed a bit more in comparison to the original image, which is what we wanted. We have very, very well preserved skin tones and mid tones over here. But notice how the blacks are a lot more intense. In the original image, they had a bit of gray, a bit of light detail. Over here, we have more punchy looking blacks. Gonna do the same with this image. And right here, we have a very nice image in Japan. Let's apply the preset. And immediately you can notice how it's a lot more punchy and contrasty compared to the original. In the original, we're, we're already having a bit of clipping over here. But in this case, the branches have disappeared because our whites are more intense and the blacks as well. Notice the difference in the original image, uh, the color of the car is a bit grayish. Now there it's black, a bit more intense and dramatic, but overall we're preserving very well our mid tones without losing any detail over there and very nice grain over here. For example, in these types of images, these types of presets work fantastic with those accentuated blacks. We have a lot more of a loss of information over here, more dramatic, and it really accentuates the shadows on the skin. This image I really like, how it turned out. We don't have any whites in this image. I would consider this part uh, more towards the highlights. We don't have any pure whites, but we do have a lot of blacks and it creates a very dramatic effect for memories, for family, friends photos, or street photography, or even portraits like this one. It just looks fantastic. I really like the grain as well. So that's the Earl Grey preset, very punchy and dramatic. Now let's create the Lady Grey. Now the Lady Grey had a bit more of a latitude, a bit more information in the highlights, also in the shadows, while preserving very contrasty black. So the blacks, we're gonna just leave them like that, but we alter the other parts of our image. In particular, the whites weren't as overexposed as we saw in the Earl Grey. So right here, I have our original image with the Earl Grey preset applied. And what I'm gonna do is just alter a bit of the settings. First of all, shadows. We want to bring back a bit more information in the dark ranges and the dark ranges over here. It's gonna drag the shadows towards the positives. Not too much, otherwise our image is very flat with a lot more information that we need. Or on the plus 55, just adding a bit more detail in the dark points on our image. 
And then in the tone curve, what I'm going to do is move this point that will control the white. The blacks, I'm just going to leave it like that at, minus, at 22 in the, in the input. But the whites, I'm just going to drag it not towards the positives. Otherwise, we introduce even more brightness, a bit more towards the darker area just to control them just a bit more. Maybe around this value is going to be 250 in the input and output 255. And as you can see, if I deactivate the tone curve, it isn't as dramatic as it was in the previous preset right here. We do have that contrast with the blacks over here, but the whites aren't as overexposed as we had in the previous preset. Now, finally, one thing that also changes with these two presets is the grain. The grain in the Lady Grey was 400. It was a bit bigger, a bit rougher, which is normal with higher ISOs. So I'm just gonna go down into the effects and add a bit more of the amount, maybe around the 50. Now we can see that it's a little bit no more noticeable and the size is gonna ump it up just a bit around the plus 55, 56. And there we have a very nice grain. It's a bit too much, but I really like it. You guys can play around with the settings. Just move it down if it's a bit too much or up we have this very nice texture in our image over here. Again, let's save this preset and see how it differs in other images. So for example, I have this very simple image in a very contrasty situation at midday, but let's see how the shadows work and also the highlights. So let's apply, first of all, the Earl Grey. And you can notice how the sky is a bit brighter because it contains a lot of white and those blacks are a lot more deep than in the original photo. It's looking fantastic with that very nice film grain. And now let's see the difference with the Lady Grey. And notice in particular how the image is a bit less bright and also the shadows have a lot more detail. This is Earl Grey and Lady Grey with a bit of a bigger grain over here. So here I have this image, which I really like. And this one is already edited with another preset. Again, a Lomography preset that we've already created. This is the Metropolis. You can check out the tutorial up in my profile, but let's apply the presets over here. So here we have Metropolis, let's apply Earl Grey. And it's a very punchy looking image. Look at the contrast, how we lose a lot of information over here in dark points on our image. The whites are a lot brighter and more dramatic. I really like this preset. It creates a very dramatic image. And then Lady Grey, notice how it's a bit flatter. It has a lot more detail in the shadows in particular and also in the highlights. But it's looking fantastic. Look at this image for a postcard over here. Now, one thing that I do need to say is that this image is already in the final editing phase. So I do have some masks over here, which is uh, maybe the final step uh, that I always recommend to do when editing. So if I deactivate the masks, you can see this is before, and then I activate them. I'm just creating a, more, a lot more of a dramatic and accentuated effect over here. So this is beside the tutorial, but I always recommend you guys to go into masks and accentuate your subject, accentuate the lights, the contrast, and be a bit more detailed with your edit. I normally don't teach this in my tutorials because, well, it isn't the purpose of the tutorials, in particular in the EdX series. But I think we did quite a good job with these two presets. So I hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video, guys. And just a reminder that these two presets are in the Elite Preset Pack V3, the Analog Preset Pack, but also the Elite LUT Pack V3. So I've reconverted all these presets into LUTs, so you can apply them into your videos as well. So check out my shop. If you can support me in any manner, I'd be very thankful. Maybe you find my presets or my LUTs helpful so you can edit in a faster manner. So link up here. And if you can't, don't worry, guys. Just like the video, share it with a friend or share it on social media, maybe in your Instagram stories, on Facebook groups. That actually helps me out quite a bit. So I'll be very thankful. And that's it for today. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. and I'll see you in the next one.